No matter if you are a student, freelancer or business professional, this video is for you and we will cover all the different types of people who take notes. And this is really important to understand in what area you are working in actually. It's a completely different type of taking notes as a student than you have to take notes as a business professional in meetings. Handwriting note taking apps might really hurt yours and your team's productivity. Why this is, we will find out in this video. How dare you saying this, talking on your channel so many times about Apple Notes, even providing an Apple Notes course in the Paperless Movement membership. And now you are saying I shouldn't use this. There are situations where you should use handwriting note taking apps or actually where it works for some people better than for others. And this is what I want to address in this video. So for example, I'm a very fast keyboard writer. I'm so much faster writing with keyboards than I would ever be with a pen. I know, however, many of my clients and members in the Paperless Movement membership, they say they are just faster with handwriting compared to keyboard, which is absolutely understandable because not everybody learned the fast typing. So in this case, I understand it might be easier for you to write down your thoughts very fluently because you don't have to think about the writing process. I don't have to look at the keyboard. I'm just looking at the screen and pouring out my thoughts onto the display. However, if you're a person looking at the keyboard and need to find the letters and so on, this is tedious. This will decrease your efficiency. So in this case, I recommend to use something like GoodNotes, Notability, Nebo, Apple Notes on the iPad. Maybe you also want to use a Remarkable, but we come to this later. And you even could use paper. The point that I want to make in this video is that you understand how you can leverage this information later on. We tend to note down everything. As soon we see something, a video or anything, we talk to somebody, we are in a meeting, we have to scribble things down. And the question I ask ask myself in the past, do I actually have advantage having these notes or actually do I never look them up at all and I'm just generating noise fluttering up my desk and therefore my brain that I always think there's so much knowledge laying around but how do I find this later on? And this is what we discuss in the Paperless Movement membership as well, where my members apply the i framework that I developed to understand what type of information do we collect and where should we store this information to find it later on. But why I mentioned good notes and so on as a solution to people who actually want to handwrite. Well, the reason is simple. You can actually select the handwritten text and you can convert it into typed text. You even can use an Apple Pencil and write down the text in your document and it will convert it on the fly into typed text. So this is a workaround, right? So people who write faster with an Apple Pencil can use an Apple Pencil, but still generate proper type text. And the advantage of type text, it is much easier to process further in different tools to send it via email. Another advantage using a handwriting note-taking app is that your handwriting becomes searchable. So you have a global search, you type in a word and you can search through all your notebooks to find something. It's already one step into the right direction to leverage your knowledge base. So you collect information over time and then you think, ah, oh, there was something going on. I was talking to somebody. You just type in the name and it will show you the note where you have taken some notes about this person. This is already a lot better than having paper notes, right? And this is where the disadvantage of the Remarkable already is. I made a video about this if you want to check this out, where I go in much more detail about the Remarkable. However, the, the big disadvantage is with the subscription, you have handwriting to text conversion, however, only to send it somewhere else. But the issue remains that it has no capabilities to search through your handwriting. So whenever I want to look something up, it is really like a physical paper notebook that I need to go through and find my information later on. If you're looking for a handwriting device, go for an iPad. So Tom, you actually have the iPad mini, you have the iPad Pro, you have the Remarkable and so on, and you still say, I shouldn't use handwriting note-taking apps. The thing is, I'm using Apple Notes. If I need to scribble something down very quickly, I want to have peace of mind. I still will be able to find it. So one thing is the global search, but the other thing is that it will be stored on the cloud. And using Apple Notes, for example, it's very easily accessible on any device, even via your browser on the Windows machine. If you really want to have cross-device functionality, then you might want to go for OneNote. 
which is the Microsoft solution to handwriting note-taking apps. Then we have something like journaling. I know that's very popular, that people have these PDF journals using in the handwriting note-taking apps. Actually, at the Paperless Movement, we even provide a digital journal designer that allows you to create your own digital journal where you can handwrite your notes and you have still interactive navigation through the different calendar days and weeks and day view and things like this, and you can make fancy pages. And this is a valid reason to use handwriting notes apps in order to create create individual looking notes. Our brain functions much easier to remember images rather than typed text. That's just a fact. You will get a lot of scientific papers that show you that our brain can remember handwritten text much easier than typed text. It makes sense, right? Because typed text at a glance always looks the same. If you look at your handwriting, it always differs. And when you add some images and your drawings and sketches, you just have to look at one page and you will instantly remember what you have written there just by looking at the layout and the structure that you did there. Why I'm personally not using this form of journaling and what else I'm using, I will talk about this in the end of the video. So Tom, now you told me it's okay to use the handwriting note-taking apps, but it always sounds like there is something much better than a handwriting note-taking app. And this is what I want to discuss next with you. First, I want to start with solopreneurs, freelancers, students. So if you're working really on your own and not in a team, then again, it makes sense that you use handwriting notes apps because maybe your thought process is much easier where you can digest information in a proper way. But the question you should ask yourself then is, how do you find the information later on? We already talked about global search. So this is one way to find the information. Another way would be using tags. So you use a hashtag in front of a word and then you can categorize your information. Actually, if you use this in Apple Notes, it will generate real hashtags that you can click on and it will show you all the notes related to this tag. If you want to learn more about tags versus folders, there's actually a productivity guide inside the Paperless Movement membership where I deep dive into the differences. And this is actually the mission and vision behind the Paperless Movement, to make you guys understand the advantages of the digital world over the physical world when it comes to using paper notebooks, for example, the paperless movement goes much further than that. We talk about how do you connect relevant information? How do you surface new information out of the notes that you take? And there we come to a tool called Obsidian. There are other tools that work the same way as Obsidian, like Rome Research. The way these tools work is they connect the notes that you're writing. Let's say you talk to different clients, you write down the name of client number one, and you take some meeting notes. And then you make the note in there that this person is from USA. Then you talk to the next person, write down the name of client number two, you take your meeting notes there and you write down that this person is also from USA. I could take some notes about what is USA, how many people live in USA and so on, but it would also show me all the people that I talk to living in USA. And this is just something you cannot achieve with a handwriting note taking. And Obsidian is very popular just for that, especially for authors, connecting information. And it goes far more complex than this, but we certainly talk a lot about this inside the Paperless Movement membership. And then a, an essential question in general is, ask yourself, do I actually need to take notes at all? I was working in corporate for eight years and was working on several projects at the same time in parallel. I was sitting in these meetings, taking notes, trying to collect everything, but I always struggled to find the information later on. And it didn't change. It was the same when I was working on a paper notebook and it didn't change at all when I switched to the iPad. And I asked myself, why is this? And I realized I'm just creating noise information that are not relevant. Maybe it's redundant. And then I realized, do I really need to take these notes? Can I even take it shorter? So when it comes to note taking itself, using bullet points rather than full sentences, you can save a lot of time. But I came to the point that I stopped taking notes completely. I just didn't take notes anymore because I was so paralyzed taking notes with the thought in mind that I won't find it later on anyway. So I stopped it until I came up with the ICO framework that I'm teaching inside the Paperless Movement that allows you now to understand what notes you should take and where should these notes be placed and so on. But we come to this when we come to the business professionals in a second. On the other hand, 
you could argue it still makes sense to take these notes because it helps your brain to process your thoughts in a complete different way. By writing it down, you might think over this again. You connecting the dots in your brain already by just writing it down. So it still makes sense that you write this stuff down and you might don't need to look it up later on because it was just to clarify your thoughts. And this again is when Apple Notes comes into play. I'm using Apple Notes, for example, to scribble something down just to get it out of my brain and make thoughts about this. But I know that I do this on purpose inside Apple Notes because it's not information that I need elsewhere. And this is really important. There's also a theory called anti-library. People who buy books but never read them. They're just in a bookshelf. But this is still a purpose because you thought about different topics that you are interested in and you're building up a library of things that you are interested in and it helps you to identify much more in what direction you want to go and what you want to learn more about. And it just gives you a peace of mind that you have this in the back. So now let's talk about business professionals. If you are a team leader, a manager, a team member or working in C-level, this becomes now really crucial because I was sitting in so many meetings where each person in this meeting had their own notebook, writing down their notes, everything was clear. In bigger companies, you even have a separate person sitting there taking notes and then sending it out as a meeting minute via email. And guess what? Everybody will just dump this email into their archive because you just had this meeting talking about this. But what happens then? Two weeks later, you will have exactly the same meeting talking about the same things again. Why? Because people didn't have a single source of truth. So what I mean by a single source of truth is, let's imagine this, you come into a meeting and you open up a project manager. Let's say ClickUp or Notion or anything that you want to use for your company, for your team, or even for yourself to collect information and manage your tasks. Depending on the type of meeting, you should consider to just open up the right tool. So when you go into this meeting and you talk about a certain task of a project, open up this task and write down what was discussed inside the task as comments for everybody to see. So this way, everybody can agree on that everybody understood it the right way. And then when you go back to your desk, you still have access. Everybody has access and looking at this single source of truth. That's the only place where you see everything that was discussed. And it goes further than that, because let's say one person drops out of this project for whatever reason, and then you get a new member in there. This person now just needs to go into this task and look up what was discussed before that. This is just not possible if everybody takes their own notes in their paper notebooks. And again, this is part of the i framework that I'm teaching inside the paperless movement to establish proper conventions, how to take notes, what are priorities and so on, before you even think about what tool to get. When I go to Twitter, for example, and people ask, what's the best note-taking app? And I see answers like Notability, and another person says Notion, and another person says Evernote. I say, this is completely out of context. People will start, okay, so many people say Notion now, and so many YouTubers talk about Notion. I should use Notion as well. Otherwise, I won't be productive. This is just the wrong thinking. It works for them in their specific use case. It doesn't mean that it will work for you. And that's also the danger with people selling templates and specific methods that are tied to specific tools because it's very restrictive this way and it can't be 100% applied to your specific use case. So this is why the ICO framework is a tool agnostic approach and will teach you the principles of productivity. So never start with the tool, always start with the basics first, your workflows, your productivity tool agnostic setup. What actually do you want to achieve? What type of information do you collect? And another very important thing that you need to think about, especially if you're a project manager, team leader, and so on, accessibility of notes. It doesn't help anyone if you take notes in your paper notebook or in your handwriting note-taking app on your Remarkable, if nobody can access this information. It goes hand in hand with the single source of truth. You want to define a platform that allows everybody in your team to have access to it, right? So otherwise it makes no point to collecting it in there. And if all this is set up properly, then managers and decision makers 
will have it easy to come into a meeting and make the decision because you will just open up this task and you show what was discussed and then this decision maker can make actually a decision instead of going through your paper notebook and try to find the information. And before we finish this video, I just want to mention why I don't use a handwriting digital journal. I actually use an app called Day One and I'm actually working on a new online course about Day One because I'm using it for more than five years now. It came up so many times when people ask, how do you actually journal, Tom? This is about time. It will be free for my members. So when you join the Paperless Movement, you will get this new course for free once it's available. And what Day one allows you, it does this resurfacing of information. I have defined the different types of information that I have in my life and in my business, and I know where to place them as soon they come up. And whenever something happened in my private life, but also in my business, where I think this is a highlight, this is something I want to keep personally in mind, then I don't have to think about it. It just goes into day one. And the main reason why I'm using day one, it has so many other features, but this is the main reason, is that it will show you each day what you have written down the same day the years before. And this is really helpful to stay sane in many cases. So for example, when I reached the 60,000 subscribers, on this YouTube channel. I've written this down in day one as a highlight and it's awesome and so on. And then you see three years ago, I had a highlight there where I said I reached a thousand subscribers and I was as excited as I was for 60,000. But thinking about this and putting things in relation again, and it was a thousand people back then. And now it's more than 60,000 people on this channel watching the content of the Paperless Movement. And I'm really proud and happy that you are out there. And I just want to give you a thank you. This wouldn't be possible without the support of you guys. And using tools like Day One makes it easy to resurface the information. I'm a person who always thinks that I need to have a purpose to take down notes. And the only purpose to me is that I will leverage it in some way or form later on. So by using Day One, it makes it much easier for me to take down some information about myself where I think this might be interesting when my future self will read this in a few years. Remind myself then what my thoughts were all the years back. So if you want to see more of these videos and you want to discuss what I thought here, go to the comments below. Let me know if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And hey, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you up next time.